What's up? Today I'd like to share with you an opening for lazy or, let's say, busy people. One of the most painful situations for a chess coach like myself is when people approach me a week or two before a tournament asking to help them maximize their results in the upcoming competition. And it's painful because even though I'd love to help, of course, but it's really impossible to elevate one's chess level within such a short period of time. Nevertheless, there is one thing that I usually do. I check their opening repertoire so that if there are any weaknesses, we can cover that quickly. And today I'll share with you an opening which you can study literally in 15 minutes and it works really, really well because it's simple, you don't need to learn a lot of variations and it covers basically your uh, games when you play black and white starts off with the move pawn e4 which is the most popular choice of white. Now, against that, you may go for the French defense. And even if you've never played the French defense before, don't worry, we're not gonna go into the mainstream lines where you do need to know a lot of theory. I'm gonna show you a system that you can use against any moves of white. So let's get right into it. After pawn d4, pawn d5, here you're attacking this pawn on e4, and therefore white needs to do something about that. And because of that, there are basically two major lines which we're gonna cover. White either may defend the pawn by playing knight to c3, sometimes they play knight d2, but it doesn't make a difference for us, or the advanced variation where they move their pawn forward to e5, trying to get this space advantage. The third choice, which is less popular, is an exchange on d5, is not dangerous for black at all, it leads to a completely symmetric position, and after that you just bring your pieces out, you castle, and everything's good, you don't need to really know much here. Therefore, let's come back to the main position and let's start with the main line after knight to c3. Now, the main moves, the main variations of the French after bishop b4, knight f6 are extremely complicated, but instead we're gonna go for the exchanged variation here. Pawn takes e4, knight takes e4. And our approach would be to solve our main problem. And the main problem of black in the French defense is their bad bishop on c8. Because of this pawn, the bishop is kinda locked there in the you know, original square and it can't really get out. And we're gonna solve this problem right away by playing bishop d7 and transferring the bishop all the way here to c6 to this active long diagonal. There are a couple advantages of this line. First of all, it's a really solid opening choice, right? It's been played by uh, Karpov, Carlsen and many other top grandmasters. And yet it's still not a mainstream variation. Now, lots of your opponents will know, uh, you know, very little to nothing about this line and so you can easily surprise them and get them out of their opening preparation. Also, it's simple for black to play because you're gonna play the same moves no matter what white does. White would usually play something like knight to f3 and then you finalize your transfer by playing bishop c6 and you already are attacking this knight on e4, say white defends it. And now, normally you'd wish to play knight f6 to put even more pressure onto this knight on e4, but you need to prepare it first. So, you play first knight to d7, preparing this move knight f6 on the next move. Why don't you play knight f6 right away? Well, let me share with you this tricky line real quick. If you play knight f6, it's it's a perfect move because it develops a piece and attacks this knight on e4, but the tactical drawback is that after this trade, you have to expose your queen if you don't want to you know, mess up your pawn structure, and after that, after bishop g5, your queen is in trouble. And that's why it is not recommended to develop your queen too early, generally speaking, because it can be exposed to different attacks. Here there is also a really funny variation where it seems at first that black can counter blow with bishop f3 and actually win a piece at the end of this exchange. But white plays a very unexpected move, queen d2. They just leave this bishop on f3 because they want to grab this queen which is currently actually trapped and is going to be captured. It's a really funny variation which is worth knowing. But again, that was a quick sideline, we did not play knight f6 right away, we just prepared it first by playing knight to d7 so that on the next move you can play knight f6 with no problems at all. Now white plays something, doesn't matter, you play knight f6, currently you're attacking this knight, white needs to do something about that. Now what can they do? If they take, you recapture, no problem. You don't need to expose your queen because you can recapture by your other knight. If they move the knight back, cool, they'll have to put their knight to a more passive position. If they play bishop g5 trying to pin your knight, that's not a problem at all because you just play bishop e7 and you neutralize it. And by the way, pay attention to the previous uh, black's moves because that's what you're gonna do no matter what, basically. Regardless of white's moves, you're gonna just develop your pieces exactly that way. Now, after you play bishop e7, now this renewed the threat to white's knight. Therefore, white will, let's say, trade here on f6. Now you recapture, and your position is just rock solid here. 
Also pay attention to this pawn on d4 because if you're a bishop which can eliminate this defender of the pawn anytime, the white's pawn on d4 is somewhat weak. It's not you know terribly weak, but in some variations white may even lose it. For example, if they try playing aggressively knight e5 right away, you can actually go ahead and just take this pawn. Therefore, they shouldn't play this. Instead, white can decide to defend their pawn by playing pawn c3. And in that case, they indeed want to play knight e5 on the next move, and even though it's not a disaster, of course, but it's slightly unpleasant. From there, the knight will possibly hit your bishop on c6 and overall will stand on this nice central square. That's why, as soon as your opponent prepared these jumps to e5, it is advisable that you just trade this knight off. Basically, we are ready to trade off our, dark, our light squared bishop in the French defense because it's our bad bishop. It's, uh, it's usually passive, and so we don't mind trading it off. After queen takes on a three, it attacks this pawn on b7, therefore we need to play pawn c6. And also we're following the old rule of Capablanca, um, which states that if you trade off your light square bishop, you gotta put your pawns on light squares. This way your dark square bishop has a lot of room for operations. Okay, and at first it may seem like white has a more active position and two bishops, but in reality when you start playing it, you will find that it's extremely difficult for white to do anything. Because of these central pawns, you have this rock solid position, it's really really difficult to figure out how can white advance here anywhere. Also, you've got this x queen square on d5 for your knight, or your queen even. For example, if white plays something, let's play some move for white, you can always play knight d5, your knight stands really well here, you also offer another exchange which will simplify the position further and will give you a completely equal position. Or sometimes you may even move your queen there to d5 which also stands very actively here, you know, attacking a lot. And if white trades off, again it just gives you a completely uh, you know, equal position. Usually white tries to do something more active and if they try playing more aggressively it very often backfires because your position is so solid that if white tries to play actively, usually they'll just weaken your position uh, and you'll be able to take advantage of that. For example, currently if white wants to avoid exchange of queens, because your queen is also attacking this bishop on g5, some of your pawns will actually play queen g3. And in this case there is a funny variation, you don't need to remember it actually, what you need to remember is just the, the overall setup of black, okay? And the following line is just to show you, you know, some funny things that can uh, take place in this variation. You may all of a sudden play knight h5, which attacks there the queen on g3, as well as exposes white's bishop on g5. And white is actually already losing here. If white tries to be creative, they may play queen e5, and after you win the bishop, they may decide to trade and play rook e5, hoping to get a piece back that way, because the rook like kind of x-rays both pieces. And if you defend it, white can attack it once more with pawn h4. And in this position, actually, I'd like to ask you to think about this and to write it down in the comments below if you can find the way for black to maintain their winning advantage. Because an obvious problem is that if your bishop goes away, white can win the knight and regain the material balance. And if you don't move the bishop away, white will be able to simply win it. So what do you do to save your winning position? Please write it down in the comments below in case you can find it. There is also one really common error of uh, white players here. In this exchange variation, after we go for this trade in exchange and our bishop goes to c6, attacking this knight, and actually even strong players fall into this trap because it looks really good for white and the reputation is completely not obvious. White castles, you play an knight f6, attacking this knight. Sometimes, as we discussed, they all trade, no problem for you here. If some of them will decide to move their knight back. That's also not a problem, you still play all the same moves, bishop e7, and that's the position where many of your opponents will choose to play knight e5. It looks cool, right? It attacks the bishop, and it's the only active move that white can play, really. In case you take here, seems like white can recapture, attack your knight, force knight to move away, and maybe white can hope to somehow, you know, develop some attack there on the king side. And it's all good in theory, but there is a move that refutes all that, which is queen to d5, and that's the move that your opponents are highly likely to overlook, thinking that you, you gotta move your knight away. And queen d5 counterattacks white and simply threatens checkmate after queen takes g2. It also threatens to capture the pawn, but anyway white has to address the major threat of queen takes g2, and the only way to deal with it is playing pawn f3, which also weakens their position. Now you win a pawn and you got a completely winning game. 
you're ready to castle queenside, which will put your rook here on this open file. Your pawn can rush forward, h5, h4. You know, this diagonal is also weak. Your queen can come there and check white king or bishop can come here. And just by the number of errors here the, that white played previously, you know, you can easily see that black should be having a winning position. In fact, Stockfish gives almost minus three here, which kind of is equal to black having an extra piece. That's the how big their advantage here is. So basically, that's how you can take down even some of the really advanced and experienced opponents. And congratulations, that's all you need to know about the main variation of the French defense. I promise that it will be simple. I Okay, I do understand that you still need to learn a little bit here, but again, because it's just a setup and you always develop your pieces the same way, it's a really, really easy setup for black. Now let's move, move on to the next common line of white, which is the advanced variation, because white advances their pawn here to e5. And here, usually black responds with pawn of c5, trying to attack and destroy white's pawns in the center, white defends it. And in this position, again, there is an extensive theory in the main lines where black goes knight c6, bishop d7, queen b6, and it all leads to very complex variations. Instead of all that, I'm going to show you, or with you a line which once again addresses the main, major issue of black, which is this passive bishop on c8. We're going to trade it off and have a good game. And pretty much no one knows this line, because it's certainly like one of the least played here in this position. And therefore, that's how you can, again, easily study these positions, surprise your opponents and get a good game. Again, it's tested by lots of my students, so I can say this with confidence. Now, how do you trade off this light score bishop? The most uh, quick intent would be to play b6 and pawn a6, but it fails due to some tactics. Let's say white plays knight f3, and if you play bishop a6 right now, yes, you do trade off this bishop, but after that, white can win with this queen a4, double attack to your knight and king. That's why it doesn't work in, in that most straightforward fashion. But instead, you can simply prepare it. Let's take it back here. And after c3, instead of going for this exchange immediately, you may temporarily address the other issue that you have here, which is development of your knight from g8. Because of white's pawn here, it cannot be developed to a usual square, and if you develop it to e7, which we're gonna play anyway, uh, it locks the bishop out. Therefore, we need to do something about this knight, and that's what we are gonna do first. So play knight e7, white goes knight f3, and now you place your knight to c6, which is which looks a bit funny, as it seems that you, you know, mixed up something and placed the wrong knight to c6, right? This knight was supposed to go there, but all of a sudden your kingside knight was transferred to the c6 square. But it does make sense, because we solved the problem, right? Now this knight is developed. I plays bishop d3, and now we play b6 and bishop a6, turning back to our main plan of trading off our light score bishop. And now there is no danger for black, and therefore you are going to do this exchange, and your position will be just great after that. It's also worth mentioning that there is no way for white to stop this. If they try some queen e2 or whatever stuff trying to prevent this move, you can always play a5 and then bishop a6 anyway, because now it will also be supported by the rook. And a5 is a useful move because, you know, in the future it's going to help you to advance on the queen side and to attack there in the middle game. Therefore, queen e2 doesn't do anything. Most of your pawns will simply castle side and after that you do play bishop a6. Here after an exchange you take on a6 back and now your position is just great. You're gonna play bishop e7, castle, kingside and notice that not only you solved your problem by eliminating your bad bishop, you also took away white's main attacking piece. Due to the absence of the bishop on d3, white cannot create any threats to your king and therefore after you just castle kingside and play bishop e7, your position is rock solid. It's in fact pretty difficult for white players to figure out what to do then in the middle game. And your plan probably will be to push pawns there on the queen side, open up and attack there, attack white's pawns in the center that way. So you have a clear plan, your pawns are gonna struggle. And in fact, many of them will play queen a4, thinking that they can attack you somehow here along these diagonals, but it doesn't really do much. You just move your knight back, defending it, and queen a4 did not achieve anything. After bishop e3, you play another cool move, queen d7. It looks at first like you just wanted to neutralize this pin, and that's why you play queen to d7. And for that reason, many of your opponents will play knight d2, just or something else, just to continue their development. But in fact, it turns out that queen d7 not only neutralized the pin, but also set a clever trap along the way, which is knight takes e5, this sudden discovered attack. White cannot take this knight, or else they would lose their queen. And if they take the queen, 
Then this knight manages to escape, and along the way we won this white pawn on e5, which gives you just a technically winning endgame because of this extra pawn, and you're having a great position overall. So that's how you deal with the advanced formation, which is the most, or at least one of the two most common ways for white to play the French defense. If you enjoyed the, today's video, I do recommend that you also check out this video, which covers how white should address the French defense, and it's a really, really interesting variation. And also, of course, if you want to elevate your chess overall, and maybe one day to reach the 2000 rating, or even to become a national master, then you may attend my free masterclass by clicking the link over there, which contains a blueprint for chess improvement. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll talk to you next time.